Hey, what's good, y'all? It's your boy DJ Fanatic Beats, content contributor for LiveOffBeats.com. Uh, welcome to this beat breakdown video. It's definitely a cool vibe. Um, I actually could hear probably Tyga on it, maybe even Offset, but um, it has some of those those type of elements, those sound selections. And sound selection is vital when you're making a type beat or a beat uh, specific to a certain artist's sound. Um, if you'd like to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at DJ Fanatic. That's DJ P H A N A T I C or uh, Instagram at Sounds for Producers. So check it out. Uh, I'm going to break down every element and also any plugins that I chose, any type of sound processing, and also just every sound in the beat and, of course, any mixing things I chose to do. Uh, usually I'm subtle on panning. Um, this is just my style. Um, I know a lot of people pan everything left to right like crazy like everyone has a different taste and also depends on the type of genre you're doing as well because at the end of the day it's just art you know you should feel free to create and not try to be exactly like the other creator which is a producer in this instance so let's um that's just my perspective so uh, the first thing I started with uh, is a loop uh, usually when I start with loops I just want some instant instant inspiration and I, he, almost nine times out of ten, if you watch a lot of my videos, um, I'll do something to it to make it more unique and just switch it up. So anyway, the first sound is this loop that it has, like a key, um, keys. So check it out. If you notice there's a lot going on there i have two shaper box instances and parametric eq2 uh, it's not panned um let me turn off the effects this is what it sounded like before and also with the loop i actually pitched it up a couple cents let's copy this value uh looks like i probably went up one 100 cents is one note and 200 and 300 looks like i went up three notes so let's just paste the value see notice it pitched didn't move once I paste it so that way I know I went up 300 cents which is three notes on the piano uh, if you look at the piano this is three notes say so you go from a to a sharp a sharp to B and then B to C and that's three notes one two three so that's basically what I did with that loop uh, because I thought it was kind of uh, low and I wanted to give it a different feel a different vibe so when you go back to the mixer, um, this is with the plugins off. And I do like the vibe of those chords, um, but it was a little harsh and a little bright for my taste. So if you notice, what I did is use what's called as a bypass, a bandpass um, EQ. So basically when I'm playing this, uh, let's turn these shaper boxes off and turn the plugin back on and pull out the fruity parametric eq2 now visually notice where the energy is in this particular loop and let's detach that and let's turn it off So with that loop, I obviously pitched it differently, but I also isolated just this mid fr frequency area and cut all the lows and cut all the highs. I didn't want it bright. It's still a little harsh, but I think I compensated in shaper box too. Um, so you can see visually that I isolated the energy of the loop um, and found the fundamental frequency area. So uh, the next thing I added was Shaper Box 2. It's done by Cable Guys. There's tons of stuff you can do in this plugin. It's crazy. Uh, for this first instance, it looks like I use Bypass Well Place. Oh, okay. I used um, a timing effect and I used tape. Tape is like a slow down. And that explains that at the end of the loop if you listen closely. So check it out. Let's just uh, isolate that and just make sure I actually did something there. So 
So I compensated with the brightness even more on the shaper box too, the first instance, and I used like a halftime effect and it's at 4-4. So you can get some really creative things just using one of these and just keep experimenting and come up with something dope. Uh, it just takes patience sometimes. Um, so obviously I was like, yo, let me take this a step further and let me put another one on there. I had beats where I had like up to seven of these and all doing different things. It depends on what you want to do creatively with a particular sound like you can you know do whatever your mind tells you to do like we're so creative and sometimes we get so limited you can you can spend a whole hour just on one sound i mean it depends because i got deadlines i got things you know that need to be finished at certain times but if you have the time man explore your your um plugins and your daw anything that could be uh beneficial to your creativity so the next thing I added this, um, it's also a timing effect, but it is, oh, I forgot what they call it. Uh, looks like I use a scratch mode and I'm not sure which preset I use, but I cut back the mix level at 18%. So it gives it like this drag effect. Check it out. Here it comes again. That came out really dope. I might have to use that in other beats. I really like how that came out. And that was me just messing around. And I was like, yeah, how can I make this a little more different? And it has like this pullback effect. So I think it's under scratch. And I wish it would show. Well, visually, you can tell it's this hard scratch fill. And I probably adjusted it a little bit. And you can actually come up with your own. Um, presets and design what you want out of all of these you hit plus and you choose whatever you got some you know pattern envelope build up they got you know categories so and then you can alter those it, it's very creative so have fun with that if you ever you know want to jump into it so the next sound um now that i had keys um i just went to like some plucks My bad for the popping it's because my mastering plugin is on let me turn that off so with the plucks i actually um let me show you the exact sound i chose is omnisphere and i wanted like a melody on top of those chords so you got like a bed of chords and then you have uh plucks and this is the chaos celeste And with that particular sound, all I did was uh, cut the lows and gave a smooth curve for the highs. And the sound already had effects built into it. Obviously, you can hear that has like a reverb and a delay. And in Omnisphere, you can control the effects. You just select the sound. My bad. Just go to notice this is A. So if you click on it. It gives you the modulation, LFOs, filter, just all the breakdown of the sound. But there's an effects sound um, rack. Uh, this is a tape slammer, basically some type of uh, reverb with some compression elements. Um, and you can kind of control what you want here as far as effects are concerned. So you can get into the guts of the sound, things here you can mess around with. And you can also obviously mess around with the effects here that alter what was done or even increase or take away or whatever. I don't get too crazy with that because um, unless I'm sound designing, but if you ever wanted to alter a sound, you find a sound that you like and you want to take away or add a little bit to it. Those are these are areas that you can jump into. Cool. So uh, I was happy with that. Uh, the next thing I added was um, some strings, I believe. So check it out. Let me turn them on. And I forgot to mention with the plucks, I actually stereo separated. This is stereo separation knob for FL Studio. And basically what that is, is making the sound a lot wider. If you notice the plucks, let's isolate the plucks. They're bouncing around left to right really wide. So if I reset this, 
See? Very narrow. So I wanted the plucks to kind of surround the listener. And, you know, kind of like, uh, what's the word? Like envelop the listener. And I wanted that melody to stand out. So it's a visual sonic element. Uh, so the next thing, uh, let's see here. Uh, the strings I got out of Contact 5. Let me show you which one that is once this loads up. And the strings I actually panned right. I use analog strings by output. And if you notice, I was in here trying to find some type of effects. Uh, this is the effects not uh, tab within there. There's the main tab. Uh, the sound that I use is underground buzz. So like some really soft um, strings. And I actually like that. So I'm going to favorite that. So the strings were just like add on like a bed of sound and there's actually I don't even think they're chords. A different melody here with strings. Same melody, just duplicated it and raised it an octave. Dope. So notice I had the chords in the loop, like piano chords. Then I made a melody of plucks on top of it. And then I gave it like this elongated string melody underneath it. So you got three melodies and they're all rhythmically different. So that alone, you know, I didn't even plan that. And like the more you make music, the more advanced you get, you know, at anything. That's just any art, that's any craft. Like that's taking talent and skillfully applying it and your skills get higher your talent gets higher etc so it just builds and builds and i did that unconsciously and now that i'm explaining i'm like yo that makes perfect sense so anyway uh the next thing i chose was a clap and i chose a clap because like almost every beat that's selling has like a clap in it i won't i can't say every beat but claps are in they've been in for the last couple years and they weren't always in and i just wanted to go with this type of sound so check it out and that rhythm i just made up the rhythm that you know i wanted to go with it's not as simple just clap on the two or four and i just cut the lows and boosted this uh, mid-range area to give it a little um, mid-range presence and the BPM is 150 so it's kind of slow uh, the next thing I added was some hi-hats and I think it's a pretty straightforward pattern Very straightforward pattern. Um, I didn't use Fruity Parametric EQ2. I'm shocked I didn't uh, because I usually cut the lows because some hi-hats have a little low bleed. See? See all this subtle pinkness? That can get in the way of other sounds when um, you have like low frequency stuff like kicks and stuff, which is next. Um, so I just turn it down and do a hard cutoff. That way those low frequencies don't bleed over. Uh, next thing is the kick. And this is the type of pattern I went with. And that kick is hitting real nice. It, it's just a perfect fit for this type of beat. Um, I boosted the um, at a little over 100 hertz in the bass area, but I also used the technique uh, with Fruity Soft Clipper. You can pause the video and copy these settings. Thresholds all the way up and post is about 75%. Uh, what that is, is like basically a compressor. And what I'm doing when I go to the kick, I actually go to the wrench tool and the levels adjustment area under volume. This is the volume multiplier and just slowly raise that you know and feel how the kick sounds this technique alone is awesome it gives you just crazy hard-hitting kicks yo so this is a big gem right here um 
when you adjust this volume level um, level with the fruity soft clipper, insane man. I'm trying to tell you, insane in the membrane. Uh, that's a Cypress Hill reference. So anyway, um, so yeah, after I got the kick sounding good, got the EQ, it's a pretty soft clipper. I went with another hi-hat uh, pattern just to kind of fill it out and do some different stuff. So if you notice, uh, it's like just icing on the cake. I did some triplet stuff and some uh, notation things in the background. So check it out. That second hi-hat, I did two different patterns. There is the first one and there's the second one. So I did some subtle things and I also probably just copied it. See, if you notice, it's the same hi-hat as the first one. All I did is um, pitch it. Why does that say up? That is strange. So it looks like, oh, okay. So the first hi-hat I pitched up to match the and that's important too with your music. You want to pitch your hi hats to match the key, so it sounds more natural. That's that's another gem because for years I used to just throw any instrument, percussion, hi hats, and never paid attention to these details. And this separates, you know, beginning producer to intermediate to advanced producer. Um, so the next thing I chose was uh, the kicks. No, no, I'm on the hi hats. My bad. So. Basically, I copied the same hi-hat, but check it out. Look on the piano roll. This is all the way down to A3. So I lowered it several octaves lower. If you go to the other hi-hat, look where the hi-hat falls, up to A4. The other one's down here. So basically, I copied the same hi-hat and came up with a totally different result. So you can use that in your beats as well. Uh, so the next sound, uh, I think I went to the 808. So let's find out. So before I uh, get into what I did with the 808, notice there's panning on the second hi-hat. I just panned it left and kind of wanted to throw people off when they listen to the beat. It just gives it just this little flavor in the background. Uh, the 808, of course, I went crazy with it because I was trying to get a specific sound. I cut the highs. And then I use r bass stereo, which can come up with some crazy results with waves. Um, with that, what you get is um, low harmonics and you can isolate the frequency and adjust the intensity, lower the gain. You can do some cool stuff uh, by with this because what it does, it takes the original sound and gives it harmonics and you can come up with some crazy stuff for low frequency. Uh, and then I use Decapitator, which is like a distortion plugin by Sound Toys. Um, I just wanted to give it a little bite, a um, little edge and fruity limiter to side chain it to the kick so the kick cuts through the low frequency this is without um plugins and let's just play the 808 by itself and this is with plugins And that's basically sound design stuff because, um, well, sound processing. It sounds lower and also has like this dirty presence to it. It's just uglier. It's like, like you threw something at it and it stuck. You know what I mean? Like some eggs and you threw at it. <laughs> it just looks, it looks messed up, man. And that's kind of what I wanted to go for to give it a little edge. Um, so this is the signal chain that I chose. Uh, to do that and also if i'm correct in that 808 uh where are we where are you 808 is it yeah what i did is also use the slide tool you turn on porta and mono and turn up slide what that does it slides the note this is a subtle slide so and the 808 is short short in sound so and what you should always do, which I didn't, uh, is trim it. 
That way you don't have like all this dead space at the end of the sound. Voila. So uh, the next sound is like a small little uh, vocal thing that I did. Uh, let's check it out. And I think I used Arcade for that. Yeah, Arcade's dope. Um, I use Arcade tastefully. Um, you can, some people just straight take everything out of there because it's sample based. Um, yeah, I'll hit play so you can hear what I did with the vocal um, option. <laughs> crazy that fits so well in this beat um so with that little vocal effect let me open up arcade and go to play i use what's called hooked insane stuff in hooked and you can match the key looks like i need to update yeah it's all right um so you can match the key actually priority number one is match the key of whatever it is in arcade or whatever you're doing to the beat um, this is E minor, and all it is is just samples. <laughs> and it has built in effects. You know, you can do a lot of crazy stuff in here. And then you can edit the actual sample. You can get into the advanced settings, and you can just get lost in creativity, which I do for hours a day. Uh, <laughs> so the next thing um, I did with that was actually just use the fruity. Um, plugins i added some reverb and delay three and with reverb let's see decay what level you can pause the video and look at that if you want it depends it's just different settings for every sound and i use ping pong delay for that what level is at 70 percent so i just did some cool stuff so the sound bounces around um and last but not least i added an open hi-hat just to kind of um add one more flavor effect and i didn't want the beat to be too busy it's just a vibe out beat and it's a lot of space for a rapper, for artists to do their thing on. So check out this open hi-hat. So with open hi-hats, that one actually fit well. Um, what you can do is go to the, um, what do you call it, the envelope. And you can lower all these except for hold, turn, turn, hold all the way up. And what that does is when you're in the piano roll, you can make how long you want the note to be. So for instance, it'll start here, it'll stop here. But being that I didn't have to do that, it fit really well. Um, so that's all the sound elements I chose. The open hi-hat is actually pan to the right a little bit to kind of balance what I did with the second hi-hat. Um, the open hi-hat is balanced pan to the right just a tad and i thought about it I was like, let me balance it out just a tad because the second hi-hat is on the left uh, so that's all the elements and with mastering um of course i say in pretty much every video everyone has their own thing but let me just brush over it i use isotope neutron 2 and i use the track assistant and then i adjust each parameter based on what it tells me and i always set this to clean uh i tend to like the subtleness of the effect um, you can try it on specific instruments like vocals, guitar, bass, drums, whatever, piano, and see what results you come up with. Uh, you can also use references. Like, for instance, you got presets in here. Um, let's see. Track assistant. Oh, that's in Ozone 2. So you can auto detect. I usually use auto detect. And then you can try these different styles and, and use intensity. I usually just use medium. Um, I don't want to go over every little thing in here, but uh, yeah, you can come up with some cool stuff. So anyway, I'm getting lost in creativity because I was thinking about trying something. Uh, the next thing I have in my chain after I do Neutron 2, I use Ozone 8, uh, which is pretty much a uh, similar effect. Not similar effect, but process. I use Master Assistant, then it loads up all these things, modules, and there's dynamic eq imager i usually have to add imager and vintage tape and then kind of adjust the things i want uh what's important is the equalizer and a dynamic e actually everything's important the maximizer is important what mode you pick uh the thresholds you set and stuff like that so um everyone has a different uh technique and i actually did a video on my actual process 
So yeah, check that out. Um, so in the last thing in my mastering chain, I use tonal balance control. It's basically an algorithm based on these target sounds. Um, I pretty much keep it on bass heavy because you know I primarily do like hip hop, R and B, and stuff, and everything. I like a lot of bass um, in my music, and that's what's hot. So um, also, you can create custom target curves based on a specific audio file. I highly recommend using WAV uh, file format if you're going to do that. And then you can, when you hit play, my bad, I turned <laughs> that back on. Uh, when you hit play, you actually can see the white lines where they fall in. And that's the frequency range you want to target per uh, frequency frequency span uh, you can do fine and then obviously that looks crazy because I hit stop but yeah so anyway that's basically to bring your entire track into specific frequency bands and just have a little more quality um, some people don't even go this far I know some producers don't even master their beats I know some producers don't even mix their beats but I mix I highly recommend that you do because you're giving your customer your client someone you want to work with a better product at the end of the day it takes some extra time it takes some skill to learn but once you get it you know you're flying so and also you know you want to give value you know because you don't just give a, a beat that's clipping everywhere and you know it, it's just not pristine it, it's not the full you and being lazy and not mixing and mastering a beat i, I highly uh don't recommend that so uh anyway so that's everything all the sounds all the options i chose to do beat sound pretty dope you know uh of course you know i got a couple artists interested in it and some people bought it so it's all good man just thought i'll share this video with you with the community so that way you're inspired and you can kind of do your own thing and hopefully you'll learn something in the video and uh, let me hit play so you can vibe out, uh, play some of the beat, and uh, that way you can, you know, uh, stop hearing me talk about every little thing. So let's vibe out. kept the 808 going all the way through i usually don't do that maybe i was just feeling it so anyway again it's your boy dj fanatic beats content contributor for liveoffbeats.com um if you'd like to follow me you can follow me on twitter at dj fanatic p-h-a-n-a-t-i-c or sounds for producers on instagram so hopefully you enjoyed the video have fun making music today i'll catch you next time peace and love